In this presentation, we will enter an adjusting entry related to unearned revenue within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. In order to see our objective, we're going to go to the reports on the left side. Look at our favorite report, that being the balance sheet report. Scrolling up chop top and changing the dates from 010119 to 022819. That's January through February 28th. The cutoff date being February 28th, the date of our financial statements and run that report. Now, when we consider the unearned revenue, we're doing it a little bit different than we might see in practice problems if you're learning financial accounting. In other words, in financial accounting, we would typically think of the accumulation of unearned revenue in a situation where we might be in an industry, for example, that just has unearned revenue. And unearned revenue, by the way, is something that's usually confusing to most people because most industries don't deal with unearned revenue. It's only there in specific situations and for specific uh, types of industries because usually we do the work before or at the same time as we get paid. In other words, if we are someone that's uh, like a bookkeeper or a law firm, we might do the work and then invoice the client, in which case we would do the work before we get paid. We would invoice the client, we record income at the point in time we did the work under an accrual basis. or if we are a restaurant or something like that, we typically get paid at the same point in time we provide the work. In this case, we would use a sales receipt. Well, here it's possible to get paid before we do the work. Unusual for most industries, but usual for some and possible for certain situations in others. So a possible situation where that might happen is if we sell like newspapers, we get paid for the subscription for a year in advance any kind of computer application, so that's happening a lot more. We get paid in advance for services we will provide in the future and uh, magazine subscriptions. Those are times we get paid in advance. For normal businesses, we also may get paid in advance sometimes. For example, in our service, we're saying that we have a guitar that someone requested that we haven't yet uh, gotten for them and we want a deposit. That's an advance payment that we're getting before we do the work in our case giving the guitar so in that case in any of those cases if we get paid before we do the work the normal journal entry from financial accounting standpoint would be to debit or increase the checking account or in our case undeposited funds and then the other side we would think would go to a liability called unearned revenue so it would be a current liability down here called unearned revenue and that's because we have not yet earned it. In other words, instead of crediting or increasing income, which would be on the income statement for earned revenue, we have to put it into unearned revenue, which would be a liability. In our case, we deviated from that system a little bit. And the reason for that is that we put the information in rather than increasing unearned revenue, we decreased the accounts receivable account. And we deviated for logistic purposes as we've gone over in more depth in prior presentations. So in other words, we put it into the accounts receivable, making a negative accounts receivable rather than putting it down here as a positive liability. The reason for that is because we want to be able to track the payments and the uh, invoices and the sales in the same area. The liability account of unearned revenue is not tied to by QuickBooks to the accounts receivable account, to the customers, to the sub account. If we use accounts receivable, then we can then say that anything that we apply out, if we have a payment, we can apply out the invoice or sales receipt to it more easily. So for that reason, we're going to put that information into the accounts receivable. So a standard textbook, in other words, problem for unearned revenue, will typically have an increase in the liability account for unearned revenue as we collect cash for which we have not yet done the work. We would have an unearned revenue balance, and then we would decide at the end of the time period how much of that revenue had been earned, decreasing the unearned revenue and recording it to the uh, income as we earn the revenue. In our case, we're deviating from that by having the unearned revenue that we have collected be recorded in 
the accounts receivable as a negative receivable so that we can then match out the future invoice. So the problem is different here. The problem is not the fact that we can't we determine how much of the revenue is earned. If it was a magazine company or something like that, and, we're, and the problem then would be, well, how much of the revenue have we earned? In our case, that's not the problem. We know when we've done the work because when we do the work, we will create an invoice or sales receipt, give it to the customer, and everything will work out at that point in time. That's not the issue. The issue that we're working with is the fact that we want to be able to tie out the prepayment, the deposit, to the later invoice or sales receipt that we will make. So from a presentation purpose, however, as of this point in time, this accounts receivable is low. So let's see that from another perspective. If we, if we copy this account, I'm going to right-click and duplicate this tab. I'm going to pull the one from the left to the right. And then we're going to go down and make, so the balance sheet's on the left. We're going to make another report. So we'll go to the reports. We're going to go down to who owes you. And we want to go to the customer balance detail, customer balance detail report. And then if we scroll down the customer balance detail, we'll see everything looks good here. But when we get down to the bottom, we see this negative 300. So that would, that's funny. We shouldn't have a negative receivable. So that's the thing that's going to be a problem. We have this negative 300 resulting from a payment that happened that's not applied to the invoice. Why? Because they paid us before we invoiced them. They paid us for a guitar that we have not yet given them. The scenario being that they came in and said, hey, I want this guitar. We said, we'll order it for you. We don't have it now. If you give us the down payment so that you're committed to it. So we have this 300. Now, when we order the guitar and give it to the, to the customer, we don't have a problem like we do with a subscription basis to know how much of the, the subscription has expired and therefore how much income we've earned over the year. If it's a year subscription, how much revenue have we earned if it's only been two months or something like that? That's not the problem. We know that once we deliver the guitar, we earn all the revenue at the point of delivery. Our problem is to make sure that the invoice that we later create ties out to this prepayment with regards to this particular customer and, and we want the system to be able to do that. So that's why we have this negative receivable here. Once we make the invoice and it ties out, we'll be good. Everything will look fine. However, as of the cutoff date, because that hasn't happened yet, we're not exactly right on an accrual basis. So this is another one of those adjustments where you might say, that's not a big deal. I don't care if there's a negative receivable uh, as opposed to a positive liability. And if you're not presenting your financial statements to anyone, then you just keep rolling forward and you just note that that is the case. However, if you are presenting your financial statements, if you're a large company, you would need to do an adjustment for this. And if you're presenting your financial statements to the bank or something like that, then we should do an adjusting entry. You should basically take this out, lower the receivable, lower the asset, and record it as it properly should be on a liability. So that's what we will do now. We will remove it from the accounts payable with an adjusting entry recorded as a liability the way it should properly be reported if we're going to give this information to others or make the proper comparison from time period to time period and then we'll do a reversing entry to go back to this after at the first day of the next time period so that we're back to the norm and we can use the logistical niceness of this method to be able to apply out the payment and the invoice so to do that we're just going to make a journal entry to reduce the accounts receivable and the other side is going to go to the un, a liability unearned revenue that we'll have to create. These adjusting entries are typically done with journal entries. We have been deviating from the journal entries and using the registers whenever possible. And because there's only two accounts, you would think this would be one of those areas. But actually the account for the chart of accounts and the register for the accounts receivable is a little bit confusing because we have to apply a customer to it. So the fact that we're using accounts receivable and we have to apply the customer actually makes the, the journal entry something that's going to be easier to use. So I'll show that and then we'll actually do this with a journal entry. So let's create a new tab up top. I'm going to right click on this tab, duplicate the tab again. So we'll duplicate the tab. I'm going to pull the one from the left to the right. And then we're going to say, and I just want to check out and see what I'm talking about here. If we go to the accounting on the left side and we go to the accounts receivable and look at the register, we're in the chart of accounts up top register then the register is a little bit different in format and that's because the register has the payee and and so it's not as easy to just do a journal entry within the accounts receivable register 
it's possible for us to set up the other side, which is also a balance sheet account, which is a liability account. But again, because we're dealing with accounts receivable and we have to deal with a customer, the registers just aren't as easy to use. So we'll, we'll have to go to the default and actually just make a journal entry here, even though there's only two accounts. So we'll go to the plus item up top and we'll go to other and we'll go to journal entry. We're going to make the journal entry as of the end of the month because it is an adjusting entry as of 228. The account is going to be an increase to accounts receivable. And that's because the accounts receivable is too low. So if we go back to accounts receivable and scroll down, notice it's a negative accounts receivable. So we're bringing up accounts receivable by that deposit. We got paid before we did the work. So our accounts receivable, uh, it, we have this negative amount bringing the accounts receivable down. We need to remove that and put it where it should be, which is a positive liability. So accounts receivable will be the first account, accounts receivable. And we'll select that item and it's going to be for $300 as we saw. It's going to be an adjusting entry. I'm just going to say ADJ entry, adjusting entry. And it's for the customer. If I go back, we have to have a customer because it's a, it's an adjusting entry. It's for string music. So that's what we want. Customer, we'll keep it there, string music. That's the one. And then the next side is going to be this account called unearned revenue, a liability account. And we don't have it yet. QuickBooks hasn't set it up for us. So we're going to type in unearned revenue and then say tab set up this account. It's going to be an other current liability type account, other current liability. And then we're going to say the sub account is another other current liability type of account. It's going to be unearned revenue. And so notice it's not an income statement account liability, even though it has revenue in the title. And we'll save and close that. And there we have it. There's the debit and the credit. So we're going to go ahead and save and close. Now, if you don't know debits and credits, you can obviously enter this information in. And if it goes the wrong way, you just switch the debits and credits. You know, you can go back in there and, and change the reverse the debits and credits. So now we're going to go back to the balance sheet. We're going to refresh it up top. We'll refresh the balance sheet. And we'll see if we go into the accounts receivable and scroll down the adjusting entry here, the 300. So there's our adjusting entry increase in the accounts receivable. If we scroll back up, we're going to go back to our report summary. The other side, so accounts receivable went up and the other side is increasing the liability. So the bad thing is going up, right? The liability, we owe it back. Why do we owe it back? Because they, it's a prepayment, it's a deposit. We're not going to give them the 300 or the string music, whoever gave the customer the 300. But unless we don't give them the guitar for some reason, if we don't provide the guitar, <laughs> then we owe the 300, but we owe something in the future. And it's probably a guitar, which is worth more than the 300. Once we provide it, we'll then get more money. We'll receive the difference, but we can't put this in revenue until we earn it typically. So if we select that item, there's our journal entry. There's the other side. It is an adjusting entry. And if we select the adjusting entry, we will then see it. So we're going to close this back out. That's our adjustment. So this more properly records this. Now, this might once again seem like a small detail, something that's going to work itself out. And it will. It'll work itself out when we complete the transaction, which will be next month. So once that happens, it'll be okay. So this is a timing difference, a temporary difference, one that we will reverse. We're going to reverse it as of the first day of the next month. We want to make our financial statements correct as of this month. Notice all these, some of these adjustments are really just to make everything correct as of the end of the month, as perfect as possible as of the end of the month. And the rest of the time period, we're really doing what is logistically best. Even if the timing is a little bit off, we might do something that's logistically correct and say, hey, if I need to fix it at the end of the month in order to present this to someone, I'll create a system to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to do this system because it's logistically easier to do. And that's basically what we're, we're setting up. So if we, if we look at the other side, here's the accounts receivable, the 11274. Now let's go to the customer balance detail, run that report. So we're going to run that report and scroll down. And you'll see that here's the 11274, which of course balance sheet 11274, that ties out back to the detail. And now here's the payment. And then here's the journal entry, bringing it back to zero. So that's, that shows that string music doesn't, we don't have this negative to string music. Now we'll reverse that as of the first day of the following month, 
because we want that negative there so that we can apply it out to the future invoice. So it's not right right now, but it'll work itself out when we apply it out. We can't apply the future invoice very easily to an account that's not in accounts receivable because the customer detail isn't tied to another account such as unearned revenue. So it's, this is one way that we can tie those two things out very easily. And that's why we're using this system and then correcting it as of the end of the month. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.